three, two, one. Nice. And like, we're back. It's like the uh, the electronic world doesn't want this episode to happen. <laughs> we oh, might no. as well give up now. No, no, no. <laughs> it's been fun, guys. No. Goodbye. Okay. Well, Ryan. Goodbye. Goodbye, Oops. Yellow Brick Road. Bye-bye, beautiful. I don't remember what he says. I'm not don't even... Don't bother to write. Okay. 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 Uh, so... Niles Ferrier. Well, we didn't... Yeah, All we right. haven't quite gotten there. We haven't yeah. quite gotten there. Oh. But, uh... Um... Luke is upset. He cannot get his ship fixed due to priority prior. of the capital ships needing to be fixed. Yes. Curtis, why did you shake your head? Poor Luke. He's Poor a hero. Yeah. He's the hero of the rebellion. They're fighting a grand admiral. They need ships. Yeah. One X-Wing is less important than all their capital ships. One X-Wing with the force can bring down... Can spark, can be the spark. Oh, God, don't, no, 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 we're canceled, (laughs) we're we're over, it's done. (laughs) Oh, boy. So Luke's upset, and he he walks away, he goes down a hallway, and there's Lando, who is also hanging around, because he was was injured during the battle? No, he was injured back on... uh, uh, Oh, Talon's uh, Merker. Yeah, that place. That one of his, uh, one of Talon's guys shot him. Yeah. So he's now all healed. Luke is talking to Lando for a little while, and then Lando sniffs the air. <laughs> Niles Ferrier. <laughs> Automatically, he knows. I know that smell anywhere. S- some specific kind of tobacco. I don't know. Or smoking, whatever like a, they smoke it, in it Star looks, Wars. It looks kind of like a cigar, mm, whatever yes. he's smoking. And uh, so they they track him down to his uh, his little gang. Right, they're trying to steal a ship. Mm-hmm. He hacked into the manifest, the repair manifest, and made sure that everyone was away from this area. Mm-hmm. He had the codes. He had the codes. Cheat codes. Mm-hmm. So Luke shows up there, and uh, they're con- first confronted by the wraith, the shadow the sh- species thing, whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. I don't there's, remember what it's called. There's a different name for it, but... I we might remember. bring that name up later. Yeah. Probably just wraith, but who knows. I thought he just called him wraith. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's yeah. spooky. Spooky. It's like Peter okay. Pan mm. in the shadow. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. I was just thinking about something else. Apparently that story is like a lot darker, the original, and like that shadow was like really evil. <gasps> evil shadow. Yeah. See? That Timothy Zahn just copying. Yep. Peter Pan. <laughs> what? <laughs> eh, whatever. The so Luke and Lando they stop uh Niles Ferrier from stealing a ship and they have to talk to him and this is this is another big thing for Luke because he was very unsure about being uh a galactic mediator, I suppose, because that's it's while the Jedi Order wasn't established by this time because the prequels hadn't been made timothy zahn already decided that the jedi were kind of known as being like kind of these weird mediators and like peacekeepers sort of Hmm. i mean they would eventually be known as peacekeepers but that was his kind of version of it where he would kind of be like a judge he might have gotten that from lucasfilm maybe or at least some indication of that from Lucasfilm. I don't know. I don't know either. Well, Let's ask George. Oh, wait. We oh. can't ask George. If only. <laughs> oh, I'm George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. 
And uh, so Luke has to like settle the disagreement kind of over whether or not they should be arrested or not. And since they didn't technically steal anything, uh, you're free to go. Able to go with, but with a warning. And And we get your uh, your security codes. Yes. So Lando takes the security codes, bumps Luke's ship to the front of the line. Front of the line, and then turns the codes in. Yes. Nice. Nice. Yep. And what happens next? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, they they start talking about Delta Source. Well, I think they they talk oh, about we, it. Oh, we jump back to Coruscant, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a meeting going on. I think so. Because. Admiral Akbar was arrested. Right. That's right. Right, Allie? She just walked in. Admiral Akbar was arrested. Maybe. It most certainly could have been a trap. <laughs> Is that what he said? No. No. Oh. We we're not there yet. Oh. Okay. He's he's doing this thing that authors typically do, Curtis. It's called foreshadowing. <laughs> ah, that's what it's Ryan. also in film. Right. Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes not so much. Right. Sometimes. Sometimes. So we're back on Coruscant and mm-hmm. they're the meeting uh, of the minds. Right. Admiral Akbar is in jail, house arrest. Mm-hmm. And so. they're are they just discussing the attack or I think they're talking about the attack and and Akbar is like, you must find a way to drop these absurd charges. Mm. Imagine if they made a Star Wars Pirates of the Caribbean crossover episode where Admiral Akbar was interacting oh. with pirates. Oh. Can he have an eye patch for his <laughs> giant eye? Maybe. <laughs> I'd watch it just for the eye patch. Hmm. Well. Other side note, I would love to have an Admiral Akbar costume for Halloween. Oh, man. I'll keep that in mind when I'm a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also have to have an entourage who, with their <laughs> yeah. controllers. Like somebody to control the mouth, somebody to control each eye. Yeah. Eye blinking and swiveling. Yeah. <laughs> Separate controllers for those? Yep. Yes. Okay. Does he have gills? Do we ever see him having gills that, like, expander? No. no. I don't no. think so. Okay. But At the very least, they don't do anything. If okay. They, he, I don't think he does, but... Okay. Yeah. So, uh, they, they are trying to figure out how to... Uh, how to prove his innocence. Um, they also meet... Uh, this is where Leia kind of decides that, okay, I'm going to go keep my word uh, with Kabarak, and I'm going to go to Endor Endor to meet him, and then he'd take me to his planet. Endor. Take Leia to his planet, yes. Han, you can't come. I'll bring Chewie, C-3PO, and the Millennium Falcon. You're on a ride, but that's okay. Yes. Because Lando shows up. Shortly, I Andrew think Han is. insisted she take the Falcon because okay, he trusts the ship. Yeah, I want you to take her. <laughs> I mean it. Take, take her. her. <laughs> She's the fastest ship in the fleet. All right, old buddy. All right, I I know what she means to you. Or something. <laughs> Not a scratch. Not a scratch. <laughs> uh oh. Isn't that brought up in one of these books? Yes. Lando's like, he's never going to let this one go, is he? <laughs> I forget which one, but yes, he does. <laughs> and it's, it's like, ha-ha. Ha-ha. References. But that that's a reference that makes sense. Yeah. Whereas Han Solo just repeating every line he ever had in the original <laughs> trilogy. Yeah. Well, Curtis each... is still less on board with that. Each character at some point says, I've got a bad feeling about this. That's like, that's a Star Wars thing. Yeah. I, I don't hold that against Timothy Zahn. Okay. But I know that. So that happens in Knights of the Old Republic, Ryan. True. I haven't played that game in a very long time, 
so I, I hardly remember any of the dialogue. It's such a great game, though. Yeah. If we talked about that, think of all the stuff I could bring. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Your Darth Revan figure? Figure and... Lego figure? Well, Lego figure. I, if we did ever talk about that, I would bring it and open it. It's still sealed. <laughs> then don't open it. It was a good find. It was a good find. Oh, I'm talking about the Lego figure. Ah. Uh, is still sealed. Oh, it's yeah, a that's right. little poly bag. Yeah, right. Curtis, the moment I open it, the value drops $20. Mm. From 20 to zero. No, from 70 to 50. Oh. Oh. Impressive. Most, Most impressive. impressive. So, Leia goes, and Han eventually decides to team up with Lando and they're going to try well so this is what I I figured out from the researches that Han and Lando were originally going to go to New Cove to try to find evidence of uh, yeah. Delta Source <clears throat> was it Delta Source or were they trying to also it was Delta Source and it it also could have been a lead for uh, Admiral Akbar's charges yes mm. I think, yes. Because right, weren't they trying to follow what's-his-face, the Bothan, Bothan? No, they just, they run into that Bothan on New Oh, Cove. do they? Yeah. It, oh. And it's not, much. it's not Phalia, it's his oh. assistant. Oh, but yeah. there was some, they were also looking into Phalia's, like, yeah. working ons, and they were like, maybe New Cove? Yeah. I, I don't remember if that was directly related to Phalia's things, mm-hmm. but. And... So Han and Lando, they, they get onto New Cove, and just by some happenstance, Luke is also there before he decides to leave uh, to go find Joris Sabaoth. But even before all of that, he does some, Luke does some research on Joris, and this is where... Wasn't that the beginning? It might have been. Book? Maybe. Who knows? It might have been the, the beginning. I don't quite remember, but he was trying to figure out more about him, and it lists a whole bunch of dates and the things that he's done or the things that he was a part of. And they make this, uh, they make a statement that Joris Sabayoth liked to meddle around in oh, things right. or he liked to be present. Yes. He was hands on. Mm-hmm. And they also, t- this is where it also brings up one of the biggest retcons from uh, these books that they had to cover up. They, put a bunch of dates oh, for all right. the events that Joris was a part of, and none of them line up with uh, the time, the current timeline, even before it was, like, official. No. Can. Well. Wait, are you talking, wh- when are you talking? So, I think I was thinking of, like, when Disney bought everything and decided oh, that, what was completely canon, but, yeah. That's like, this is even. messed up. Yeah. <laughs> This is even before that. Right. But episode um, one hadn't come out yet. We yeah. had no actual timeline. He was just like, yeah, I guess that that's when these happened. Mm-hmm. Sure. And uh, we also learn a little bit more about when the Clone Wars happened in this version and how there's like a 10 or 20 year gap between the Clone Wars and the rise of the Empire. Right. And... Yeah, and then it was the retcon was essentially uh, the emperor, Emperor Palpatine said, "Oh, I changed the calendar at some point, and <laughs> that's why all the dates are weird." So, yeah, that's I, a good one. I, I, I guess it they works. nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> no problems whatsoever. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, I would almost prefer if they pulled. Uh, a Fall of Reach, uh, when 343 took over Halo, they re-released The Fall of Reach, and they corrected timeline issues that it had with the game Halo Reach. Okay. Or they, they did their best to correct it. So it, I would almost have wished that Lucas had just, like, reprinted all of these with correct dates. Mm. Yeah. Doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Doesn't matter they're anymore. They're meaningless books. I think they're very meaningful. They cool. mean nothing. They Not mean nothing. Canon. If we hadn't had these books, we would have never got gotten thrown at all. Oh, that's a good point. 
So Suddenly, other, Curtis is like, "Oh wow, these these mean a lot." <laughs> yeah. Other than that, throw them, throw them, <laughs> start start them, uh, start a fire with them. <laughs> Yikes! Oh no. boy, no. Every Not page looks. that doesn't mention Thrawn, rip it out, <laughs> and burn no. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no. Oh, so yeah, that's that's the reason why all the dates are wrong, apparently. Uh, so jumping back. Uh, Luke is apparently also on New Cove for some reason before going to find uh, Joe Mark to find Jorah Sabaoth. Right. The planet Joe Mark to find Jorah Sabaoth. Uh, and there's a dispute in this bar that he apparently walks into while he's drinking his hot chocolate. I thought he went to the bar with Lando. Maybe. Because Lando wanted to go to the bar to meet someone. Maybe. Well, I know that Lando and Han, they park the Millennium Falcon somewhere. Right. And then Han's they like, look at that boffin. the Millennium Falcon. Oh, All right, yeah, the Lady, Lady Luck. Luck. Yeah. Yes. Ha. Ah. Jinx, Ryan. Yes. Got him. You already have a Got soda. Ha. <laughs> so I'm out. So they park he the got Lady me. Ha <laughs> Right. And then they step out, and Han Solo's like, that boffin over there. I know him. Yep. And it's, Good eyes. Yep. I think he, he recognized, like, some insignia he was wearing, mm. which is familial ties. So mm. Something. Well, Han goes to do that. Lando eventually meets Luke in the bar, or they go to the bar together. I'm not sure. Whichever way, there's an argument going on in the bar between these two aliens, and it has to do with payment. I forget what they... Payment for a job or yeah. failure to be paid for a job. Yeah. Oh, uh, one of the the alien wanted to pay him in Imperial credits, and the mm-hmm. other guy was like, no, the Imperial credits are no good. I need something more real. Yes. Right. So they call upon Luke Skywalker as the Jedi to mediate. So he comes over, he hears both sides of the story, and he has to come up with some sort of compromise, even though the currency isn't quite correct So Lando is also there. He's like, Lando, what's conversion rate? And Lando's like, I'm not sure. (laughs) But I know someone who might know, and his name is Niles Ferrier. I just spelled his spec. He's right over there. (laughs) So there he is, Niles Ferrier, who we established that he would know uh, the conversion rates because he does work between the Empire and the New Republic. He's known for that, so he kind of gives a... He's not really happy about it, but he gives a guess. He gives a like, fairly current... Mm-hmm. Um, oh, did we lose my very interesting and enrapturing uh, monetary conversion spiel in the first half of this? Uh, yes. That's tragic. Yeah. It was really good. Try to recreate it. I don't remember what it was at all. I... I think it had to do it with, had, like, territories because the the Empire would lose Oh, uh, right. Territory. Shifting lines. Mm-hmm. Shifting, shifting territories, which could value or devalue their currency rapidly so the conversion rate wouldn't be uh, stable. Mm-hmm. Right. Because Curtis asked the question, I think, like, why not just ask a computer right. what the conversion rate is? And because uh, the Empire is losing territory and... Losing battles, their currency isn't stable. Yeah, right. And then I think I made the the comment that it also the New Republic's new government they hadn't quite established a currency. Right. Up, you know, all across the board currency for the New Republic. So. That's the Cliff Notes version. Yeah. Yes. So he gives like he gives an answer that uh, the dude who looks like Greedo. Uh, was he the dude that looks like Greedo? I don't well, remember. I think, I think that was the the one who was uh, who had to pay the guy. Was a Rodian? Was a Rodian. I don't remember that. And he says that he doesn't have enough money to do that kind of conversion. Or... And then Luke's like, Niles, convert this. Yep. More conversion. And then it's like a, I don't know, something else. Plus he has to pay damages. Because right. He, he destroyed a droid. So the 
the the other alien who is going to get paid, he's like, "This is harsh, but fair." But fair. <laughs> and they go separate ways. <laughs> it just sounds like a line that would come out of uh, a video game. This is harsh, but fair. But fair. <laughs> End of that random <laughs> discussion. <laughs> you walk, walk, walk along. away. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Mara Jade is sent to pick up uh, a ship that I guess the New Republic had borrowed or something. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how that happened. Or or Han uh, made a promise that he could get this ship back to oh, them. Oh, right, yes. Um, on, I forget what planet, what planet it was, but uh, he, he, like rescued card from sure. that planet like he kept him from getting impounded sure and he left the ship there and he was like yeah I'll, I'll settle it with the authorities and we'll get your ship back so mara's going to pick up that ship hmm. so while this happens she then also makes like a quick detour or something and she goes and talks it, to thrawn i thought thrawn like caught her that could be too because he's just that smart <laughs> he is smart did Mara find Art. mushrooms on this shortcut? Huh. Uh-huh. I've been watching <laughs> the art and the stars, and Mara Jade will be here now. now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, whatever happens, apparent uh, Mara has to go talk to Thrawn. They have a discussion. Thrawn says that you are one of several hands, and oh. Mara is like, oh, <laughs> how can that be? How can this be? This a is thought? Impossible. Yep. And I think that's when they also, uh, Thrawn is upset with Talon Card because he helped Luke in the New Republic. Right. So he wants to like arrest him or take him into custody for his crimes against the the empire and mara says give me like a couple days and i can get him to just go to you peacefully so she flies back to talon card's base and uh the empire's there yep because Tron's like you know what i'm just gonna capture him anyways because i'm a cool guy and that's what i do i changed my mind <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh so that's where that's the motivation for Mara to have to go find Luke uh, yes. and get him to help, get her to help. Get, get him, him to, to help, help her. her. Yes. I think he did that the first time we recorded this too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> oh, man. Brain hurts. <laughs> Anyways, she has to get him to help her rescue. Get him to help her rescue Talon Card. Card. Yes. yes. And then she reveals why she hates Luke so much. Uh, she did that in... Oh, did she? Yeah, in, when they were in the forest. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. But she's like, I hate you, but we have to work together. Right. Mm -hmm. This Timothy Zahn guy, he's like, got to keep finding reasons for her not to actually kill him. Yep. Right. Yep. Kind of important. And... It, and is this when she had the creature thing? Or is that when they go visit? That's when she comes Luke. to rescue Luke ah, later. Okay. okay, so this this leads us to Han's, uh, he's like, Han's perspective where he's uh, following this Bothan dude, the Phalia's assistant, mm -hmm. leads him to some weird building, and uh, he's, he's, Han is captured, Yes. By this group of, I don't know, we don't know who they are. Freedom fighters yeah. or something. And uh, we go back to Luke and Lando, and they're going back to their ships. They're like, huh, huh we had a good time in that bar. We settled a dispute. And then uh, the Empire comes out of nowhere. And Shy surprise. Yes, shy surprise. <laughs> we shouldn't have listened to that right before recording. <laughs> they... Uh, they both have to get to their ships, and oh, that all happens after Luke and Lando meet up with Han in this building, I think. Maybe. I don't think Luke ever gets there. Maybe not. Either way, 
they all get to their ships. They all decide to leave. Uh, La- Lando and Han, they are taken with this group of freedom fighters or mercenaries, these random people, because uh, Borsk Valia's assistant also went with them. So they're like, we're going to go with you guys too. And Luke heads off to Joe Mark. <coughs> yes. Where he finally meets Joris Sabaoth. And Luke is their first... Uh, their first interaction together, Luke is a bit confused by him because uh, he's telling him how, you're a Jedi, you need to take control of every situation. And Luke is like, oh, nobody told me that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. yeah. Ben and Yoda never told him to do that. So, But he, he sticks around mm-hmm. because his first... His first thought was like, Yoda wasn't what he appeared to be either. Mm-hmm. I should let this guy make his case first or yeah. see what he's about. Um, so they get on like a little cart thingy and they go to the town on this planet. Uh, I think this is also where, I think Sabayoth tells Luke that he is dying. At some point he, he tells him this. I don't know if that's in this book. Maybe yeah. it was. I Maybe. don't know. I don't remember. Don't look at me. They get to the town. There's a dispute happening, and Jorah Sabaoth, he barges into the situation because that's what he does. Ugh. And Ugh. he he's talking to these guys about... What happened? I, f- I forget I what, the, what the issue was, but Sabaoth just says, you need to fix the, the you, damages. You were wrong. Yeah, you were wrong. And Luke is like, what? No compromise? No nothing? What's going to happen? Like, what's the... What else is going to happen? And then Jorah Sabaoth is like, force lightning. And he attacks someone. someone. He doesn't kill them. He just injures them. Inflicts pain. Mm -hmm. Pain. Jedi force lightning pain. Ah. (laughs) It's interesting because Timothy Zahn didn't know what the Jedi Order would be, but what they became still makes Joris in a, sort of an oddball for the Jedi because mm-hmm. the Jedi Order was hands-off. So it's it's interesting how continuity sometimes does work out, mm-hmm. yeah. even though he didn't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, worked yeah. out. But yeah, after that, Luke's like, oh, this guy's kind of nuts. I should probably stay and save him. Yep. <laughs> well, so this is where uh, we also establish how Force Ghosts apparently don't stay around forever in this version of Star Wars. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, or they they either do or they don't. I'm, I'm not they, entirely sure. They, they don't, uh, because the beginning of Heir to the Empire, Luke talks to Ben's ghost, yeah. and Ben's like, mm, I'm leaving now. My power in this world is um, being drained. Or yeah. Bye-bye. 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 But Luke's guess for why Sabaoth is like kind of crazy is that maybe on outbound flight, he uh, when all the other Jedi died, uh, all of their spirits or whatever like got stuck connected. With him. Yeah, yeah, stuck with him for too long and too many voices in his head. But uh, that was that was wrong because we learn in uh, later on, or actually we kind of learned in the beginning. Because Thrawn, in the beginning of Heir to the Empire, he's like, Joris Sabaoth can't be there. Why not? He's dead. He's dead. Yeah, yeah. And then in Outbound Flight, it's established that he actually was the commander of the ship that destroyed the Outbound Flight with Joris Sabaoth on it. It's a cool, cool review, reveal later on if you're a fan of all And you books. gave it away. Yep. Yeah. Oops. Imagine those dozens of people... Who haven't read this book yet. Yeah, Oops. I was one of them a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. So, uh, yep, Luke stays with him, and he kind of, under the idea that he's going to help to bring him back to the light. Right. And maybe you learn something from him, because he, he still is kind of fresh to this whole new you know, being the peacekeeper and the mediator and the negotiator. Keepers of the peace, not soldiers. Yes. 
more continuity that he didn't know would work out. Yep. Uh, so all of this happens while Mara Jade flies to Jomark, and she, I don't know if she crash lands on the planet or not, but it's no. kind of a rough landing because yes. she feels the, the force connection briefly. Whoa. Uh, from Sabaoth trying to like probe her mind or something. Does this part happen later? No, I don't think so. Curtis, when does this happen? It says, meanwhile, Luke Skywalker means the insane Taurus Sabaoth. Right. Um, um, could you skim Mara to find... Jade finds that once again she needs her help. Okay, so maybe it is now. I don't... My timeline's mixed up. S-R-Y... Yeah, she, she, it's pretty darn close to this point. That All she, right. I just, I don't want to retread a lot of what we are, have already recorded. Right. right. I suppose the next thing that we could talk about was uh, Leia's perspective, how she's yeah. going around Endor for a little while. And uh, she goes through the the spot where the, the Death, Death Star, Star blew up. Yeah. yeah. And she faints. Notice how it actually exploded in this timeline. Yeah. Right. If it didn't land on some other planet due through to hyper hyperspace. Through hyperspace. <laughs> the ah. explosion accelerated the remnants to hyper. I still haven't. I got to read up on this. This is such a weird. Because I, I just could have sworn watching episode nine that they went to Endor and that's where the thing was. I'm pretty sure it's a new planet. <sighs> if only you had a device in front of you that could answer these questions. Oh, that's a good point. Questions. Okay, carry on with uh, your discussions of Leia and the okay. things. So, yeah, she passes out for a little bit, and she's like, mm -hmm. I'm fine. We just got to change our orbit so we never pass through that spot again. Yep. We'll, we'll be right as rain. Uh, Noguri Kabarik guy shows up, and uh, he says that, okay, I'm going to take you to uh, Onager, but don't want you to bring anybody with you but she says well technically my droid is a droid so and he's gonna trans translate yeah that's important and, and uh this guy he's got a life debt to me yeah and well, a life debt to han which extends, extends to, to me to yeah and to luke and yes. to our unborn children yes he just keeps extending this life debt to yeah. people and oh yeah and then Kabarak is like oh it's very similar to what we do as Noguri, and it's like, okay. He's an so honorable warrior. We're yep. good. Let's go. So they they leave the Millennium Falcon around <laughs> right. Endor. Orbiting Endor. For some reason. And this is important because later on, Thrawn's like, I wonder what's going on at Endor right, right. now. Right. What he, is the art telling me about Endor? The, Endor yes. the art led him to figure out that Leia went to Endor. And he goes there, and he's like, the Lenny Falcon is here, but there's no one here in it, and they would not just leave the ship behind for no reason. We'll take it with us. Yes. <laughs> well, of course. Of course. And yeah. so does he, once again, does he use the art to determine that they went to the Nogri I, uh, planet? No. No. I don't think okay. so. No. I, I was just throwing that in there. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, he does eventually wind up there, but I think it's... That's more happenstance yeah. than, yeah, he's just going there because he wants the one last Nogri attempt to take Leia? Something. Or was he telling them that they weren't going to do it anymore? I don't remember. One of those two things. Okay. Curtis has an answer. Okay, well, according to ScreenRant.com, the uh, pieces of the Death Star fell into the orbit of the moon Kefbir, one of the nine moons of Endor, the, oh. the gas giant. Oh. I wish we could see the, the gas, gas giant, giant or any of the other be moons. in the background yeah. of one of those shots. Uh, and it fell into the sea on that moon, is okay. what this, this says. All right. Okay, since it's it's nearby, oh my God. maybe it makes a little Ryan, bit more sense. Ryan, did you see that explosion? I mean, there are different versions of that explosion, so <laughs> yes. And all of the versions go, boom, there's nothing left. You know what they call oh. the uh, shockwave? What they refer to it as? I know it has a specific the name. The Praxis Effect. Because oh, it looks exactly yeah. like the Praxis Explosion. Yeah. That's cool. 
Even in Star Wars, they can't get <laughs> They away can't from escape Star from Star Trek. Uh-huh. Very nice. Very nice. All right. So we go to... Uh, I don't know. I don't Mara know. Mara getting Luke, I guess. Yeah. And then we'll cut back to Han and Lando one last time to go to New Cove? No, it was some other... I forget which planet they go to. Wherever they go to with Bella Bliss. Yeah. And that's kind of where part two starts. Mm -hmm. So we might have some overlap with that conversation, but... Yeah. Han, Lando... Yeah, Han and Lando, they land on whatever planet... Bella Bliss's base is on. Mm Mm-hmm. And they're saved by a third party. Yep. That that happened. Mm -hmm. And then they go to Bella Bliss's... Yep. Bella Bliss was the third party. Yeah. Oh, it was? Yes. Uh, Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, that's where they they discover who he is, and Han is kind of doing some hero worshiping because Bella Bliss is Corellian, and Han is also Corellian, and apparently it's just a little hero worship. Yeah, just I wish little. they'd stop doing that. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. mm-hmm. uh, they and Han had met Bella Bliss at like some school function or yeah. something, and Bella Bliss is like, "I remember you. You asked hard questions," and Han was like. I got dared to. <laughs> I didn't want to or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so they're walking around this compound afterwards. They're they're at the bar. Right. The, they wind up in the bar. And Lando is like not too... Mm, he's not too pleased mm. about this. He's like... He's suspicious. He's, yeah. Where's my buddy Niles? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't smell Niles Ferrier. Mm. <laughs> So maybe it's not quite rotten, but something's fishy. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't smell fish. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he's he's looking around at some things, and then he eventually drags Han out of the bar, or, or Bella uh, Bliss Bella has Bliss to go has take to go care of do something. Yeah. yeah, so they go back to their quarters, and they're having a, a little heated discussion with each other about whether or not they should be trusting Bella Bliss. And this leads to Han or Lando like scratching some paint off of a chair. <laughs> oh right! And they discover under the chair it's that blue. it's blue. Lando's and gold. like, "There's <laughs> only one kind of ship built like this with blue and gold paint on the chairs. It's the Dark Force." <laughs> yep. <laughs> Lando. Lando. Yep. Just... I I love the explanation. Yep. Given as to why he's an expert about the dark force, <laughs> he got right. they he got conned into a set of coordinates for the fleet at some point in his illustrious career, and so he wanted to con the same coordinates off to someone else. <laughs> so he became an expert about the dark force. So it would sound like he knew what he was talking about. <laughs> So, anyways, Han and Lando confront Garm Iblis about having the Dark Force and how he should come back to the New uh, Republic. The New Republic to help things, and he's like, he doesn't want to because uh, there are issues with Mon between Mothma. him and Moth- Mon Mothma and she's, how they parted ways. She's, she's taking over. She wants. She's tyrannical. I told you it would come to this. The Jedi are taking over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so he's he's not really budging all that much on it, but he the invitation is still out there. And does... Is this where Han and Lando just, like, straight up leave? Or is there something else that happens? Uh, I think they leave. Okay. Do they? I don't remember. I don't remember either. Well, either way, they get to... uh, We go back to Luke and uh, also Mara's perspective as well. This is where they meet up again because Luke is still on Joe Mark and he's slowly like kind of... Like, kind of becoming a puppet for Jorah Sabaoth, where he's, like, making him judge all these people and 
slowly he's like, I just feel so tired all the time. Oh, yeah. So much death. Mm-hmm. What can men do against such reckless hate? Yes. So <laughs> Mara comes in and she has to get Luke off of the off of the Joe Mark, so she can help, so he can help her to save Talon Card. And she's like, she doesn't really want to do that at all because of her feelings towards Luke, because she he ruined her life. And it's complicated. Yeah. So she gets to Joe Mark. She almost crashes because Sabiath is trying to like take over her mind as soon as she gets there. No, she's got a Salamiri. Oh, He's that's messing right. with her ship. Oh. Making it hard for her to land. Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. She brought one of the lizards. Yes. Oh, yes. And right. then she walks up to Luke, and Luke's like, wow, I feel a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joris Sabayoth comes out and starts talking to her, and Joris told Luke to stay in the mansion, and Luke's just like, but I must serve you, Joris Sabayoth. I must be your servant. And then he walks over into the near the lizard, and he's like, boom, I'm awake. <laughs> I don't remember the servant thing. Here it was something like that. Ryan's not directly quoting yeah. the book. I know, it's just my brain has like a very different set of events in my head, so I'm like, huh? Hmm. Either way, he comes out there and he, because the force is no longer around him, he's like, he's finally is realizing that, yeah, all this and what you're doing is very wrong and I need to leave. So they start fighting Jorah Sabayoth and uh, R2-D2 remote pilots the X-Wing and shoots Joris. But he's but, fine. But he's fine. And Mara was like straight up about to kill him anyways. She was like, yeah, let's not let him keep living because he's causing a lot of problems. But Luke's like, no, no, we must save him. Or whatever. Allow him to be saved. Typical Luke. Typical Luke. So they leave... <coughs> And this is where they start their adventure within uh, Admiral Thrawn's uh, Star Destroyer. The Chimera. Yes. So they they ended up taking another Imperial shuttle that was, like, shipping stuff. Well, yes, she was shipping stuff yeah. on that shuttle. Yeah. And then they cut a hole in the bottom of the ship and then through the floor and they get around through the ship luke uses the force to like not do like a mind trick but to make some of the imperials like not as observant towards them walking around and uh they like change into imperial like flight suits and they get over to the the garbage compactor and luke's they like okay i can jump up there there's the gate cut it open and i'll be Right next to uh, Talon Card's cell. Good to know Star Destroyers are laid out the same way as the Death Star was. Yes. Very fortunate. That is a little a little too convenient. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. So he gets in there. He rescues Talon Card and he's like, Oh, that's nice. I don't have to get in I'm Luke Skywalker. Anymore. I'm here to help you. Uh, <coughs> yep. Aren't you and, a little uh, short for a stormtrooper? Uh -huh. That would have been heavy-handed. Yeah, a little. They uh, they jump back down through the garbage chute. Talon card puts on a a flight suit, and he's also asking like, "So how'd you get in here? Oh, Mara has codes or whatever." And she's like, "Oh, did, was she like a part of the Empire or something?" And he put two and two together. Yeah. Four it wasn't a test. Yes, it was. I won A+. Plus. Yes. <laughs> uh, and they have to start avoiding a bunch of Imperials because they realize Talon Card is broken out. They, they fight them a few times. Right. They were avoiding people for about 10 seconds, and mm -hmm. then the alarm went off. Yeah. And uh, they're trying to figure out where's the least likely place 
Thrawn would assume we would go. So they're like, let's go into deep storage because he would never think we'd go there. And then <laughs> Thrawn immediately, Thrawn immediately thinks. thinks. <laughs> they will go, go where they think I won't think they will go. So they will go to deep storage. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Thrawn is very smart. That Thrawn. That Thrawn guy. Uh, and in deep storage, that's where the Millennium Falcon was. Millennium. Uh, well, the the Imperials have found it, and then they stored it down there like five minutes before all this happened. Right. So it's conveniently right there for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Luke. Luke sees the Millennium yeah. Falcon, and he's like, "We're taking that ship out." Yep. Han would never forgive me if I left it here. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then. Once they escape, Talon Card is like, well, I have a, a great... Uh, I've uh, got a deal uh, for you. Yeah, I've got a deal for you. I've got an offer for the New Republic. So this is where uh, we follow up with Leia, where she had since discovered that the Empire was, in fact, uh, continuing to poison the land Poison on, grass or yeah. something, right? Because right. they left these droids there that had these chemicals in them and poison well, everything. the chemicals were to reverse the poison that they put there. Oh, okay. They manufactured the poison grass that took over. Ah, okay. And Doesn't they were like, anything else look at this grow. incredible antidote we have. We'll save you. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And so ah. she, she brings all of her findings before all of the Nogri clans and... She does all of this while she, like, spins a lightsaber around her because she's like, I must look like a powerful Jedi. So, <laughs> yeah. Cool light show. Yeah. And the, the Nogri are hesitant, but eventually they agree that they have been duped by the Empire. And I think the... In- they destroy the probe droid that Thrawn left behind. Yeah. And I think the, the reason that she was set off with discovering this was she finally asks the matriarch of uh, whatever clan uh, Kabarak was a part of, like, how long has it been like this? And it's been like 40 years, 40 years. So it happened during the clone wars. Yeah. Uh, Amazing. Uh, Ah, so 30 or 40 years would have made more sense. I don't know why George chose like 20 Mm-hmm. Whatever the heck he chose. Because he's George Lucas. Yeah. Oh, I want to do what I want because I'm George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> because he envisioned Anakin Skywalker being 30 years old when he became Darth Vader. Wasn't he only like 23? Yeah. I mean, well, he's... He's like 18 or 19 in episode 2, and then episode 3 is like a couple years later. Oh, yeah. Wow. So he's like... he's. Barely in his 20s. Yeah, and Obi-Wan's like 30-something, maybe. Yeah. Man, he ages a lot. Yeah. Exactly. The desert's hard on a guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's not Man. even tan in episode four. <laughs> okay. He wears his robes all the time. You'd think he'd die in that heat, but... <laughs> He's got that Jedi cooling method. Uh, it's like, I am ice. I think there is one thing that I... Uh, one comment that I've heard a lot from people is how they didn't like it that those robes that Obi Wan was wearing oh. in Episode Four were the just the <laughs> Jedi robes to become the Jedi robes. Yeah, because I think a lot of people's assumption originally was that a Jedi the 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 only reason that Obi Wan Kenobi was wearing those robes was because he wanted to be inconspicuous and not be noticed by anything by anybody Mm. and then they straight up decide that no those robes are what jedi wear all the time Mm -hmm. so it's i don't understand why obi-wan would be wearing them he lives out in the desert empire tradition Ah, tradition i don't know whatever i don't know either short tangent Screw you, George Lucas. George Lucas. Ha, 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 ha. He's a great guy. I like him. Yeah. Uh, so once they, once Leia brings all this evidence forward and uh, the Nogri are going to start possibly 
going towards the New Republic rather than the Empire, uh, choosing to s rather not to serve the Empire anymore. Uh, Leia then leaves, goes back to Coruscant, where Talon Card is there now, and he's brokering a deal with the New Republic about where the Dark Force is. Oh, yes. So I don't know if it ha if he discussed this earlier in the book or not, but at some point we eventually learned that when he was serving under this other captain that Luke and Han or uh, Lando and Han are going after that they were doing like a, I don't know, a job that went bad and they made a random jump into hyperspace. Oh yeah. To and get away it, from someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where they accidentally discovered the dark force, but they didn't know it at the time. They just thought, Oh my God, a fleet of ships. Let's get the hell out of here. Yeah. Right. So they quick made another jump and Talon card, like took a record of, uh, Wrote all the down jumps. The coordinates. Yeah. That and he they erased made. them. Yep. So that only he and a few other people on that ship would have ever known. Yeah. So he's been Talon card has been slowly brokering deals throughout the years to like, sell the dark force to people which is why uh garm garm Bliss had a few I thought ships garm got it from the other guy got the ships oh the yeah, that's right yeah he got them the other him. guy was selling the ships talon was just sitting on and he's like uh, this is gonna be a great opportunity one day yeah i think that's right well either way they now are going to go uh Borsk Falia is going to be in charge of this New Republic fleet to go take over the the right. Dark Force because they didn't want Leia or Luke or any of them involved because they were too closely connected to Akbar or whatever. So, but they still all go. They still go and they go <laughs> in secret, and they. Oh right, they card card loads up his ship with uh luke khan and lando and, and they, rogue rogue squadron too rogue i think squadron, yeah, yeah. And they fly yeah, off wedge yeah wedge wedge is in there too i like wedge that's my favorite part of that squadron's trailer it was like it's wedge <laughs> <laughs> and yep so they they get to the dark force and there's only a, a couple of ships around there here's the thing it's a similar problem I have with Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, mm. where they didn't notice there were only 15 ships sitting there, mm -hmm. or and no one comments on it, because the, uh, the Reliant warps in to SETI Alpha, and they're like, this is SETI Alpha 6. How do you not notice that there's a planet missing? Mm. Right. How do you not notice that there's only 15 ships left? It's the one issue I had. Yeah. Well, they get there, and Luke is trying to decide, which ship do we go to? The Force told me that one. That one. That one? And they ask him, like, why should we go to that one? I don't know. Aye. That one. Yep. Luke just knows. He knows. The He's Force. Smart. Force, yes. Mm -hmm. We'll use the Force. Uh, the Force works. works. <laughs> kind of is, though. Yeah. <laughs> They get to the. They get on board this ship, and first thing they notice is like it's very clean here. Mm. That's weird. Mm, the cleaning droids. Yeah, they all still work for some reason. Mm. And uh, uh, oh, did they? They also kind of talked about how uh, or why the ships kind of wound up there. Oh it right, because like, the the people on the main ship which they landed at mm -hmm. they got infected by something and maybe everyone in the fleet was infected but it didn't matter because they were all slaved to that one ship yeah so those people went crazy flew off into hyperspace in a random direction because they were going nuts when they hit the hyperdrive and so all the other ships were like linked to it and they all followed mm. so connecting back to the first book with the slave circuit right that remote thingy mm -hmm. that thing that george lucas never brought up yep Hmm. Correct. Hmm. Although this book does have the the built-in caveat of after this accident with the dark fleet or the dark force, people stopped doing that. So right. it's like mm -hmm. a weird experiment that George Lucas just didn't mention. I guess mm -hmm. maybe it happened before the Clone Wars. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it happened when Anakin Skywalker was five. Right. By the time. 
all this is happening and Luke and Han Lando, they're all on board the, I think it's like the main ship of the dark force. I think they're on. Yeah. I'm not. I think so. Yeah. Maybe not. They're on the ship. That's where we cut to Thrawn's or the empire's perspective, not directly Thrawn, but right. they're ordered to go there to pick up those ships and they come out of hyperspace and they're like, Hey, there's a bunch of new Republic ships there. I guess we should start. We will engage. Yeah, we will engage. They start, start battling and whatnot. They fight. They fight. They fight. Mm -hmm. They fight. And all while this, all while that is happening, Borskphalia's New Republic ship has also arrived there. Leia's on board as well, and uh, Borskphalia like. Why does he like kind of goes up against Leia at some point? And right, pulls he's a like, gun on her. screw, screw those people. We're not helping them. Yeah, there's an Imperial Star Destroyer. This operation's over. We're mm -hmm. getting the hell out of here. Yeah, and I, I think that's her like getting payback at Han and Talon and Luke for running off before she, her official operation could begin. Okay, that was my indication. Was she's being petty about the whole thing? Okay. He was or she was? He. I'm sorry. Yeah. And uh, then, like, she opens a, up a communication of some sort. Or Talon Card, like, suggests to her that you should open up an open line to the entire crew so that they can hear what uh, Borskvalia is saying. And it's essentially all this stuff about how, like, he, he only took the people that were extremely devoted to his... Uh, cause right. or whatever and yeah we're not going to sacrifice uh, uh, or something it's whatever it is that he says uh, it's enough to make the rest of the Republic New Republic officers on this ship like go against Borsk Valia, and they're like yes we're going to help Rogue Squadron and everybody huzzah, mm -hmm. huzzah. to so battle mm -hmm. there's a space battle that happens Talon cards, uh, people come out of. All right, they show up. Too. <laughs> they help out with the battle, and Mara Jade is flying around in her ship, and her ship gets destroyed by an Imperial oh, yeah. Star Destroyer. She has and, to eject. Yeah, so she's just kind of floating around in space for a little while. That I do remember. Yeah, uh, the Imperials eventually get to the ship that uh, Han and La uh, Han, Han, Luke, Lando are all on. Yep, and I think she was there too. Yeah something and this is where luke starts to notice something fishy about the stormtroopers and like uh he he realizes that there's something something weird about their brains or something oh right 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 right, right. Their brains. He's, he's not he's not quite sure but he's like something strange about these people mm -hmm. they're off they're able to defend themselves against the imperial forces and I don't know how many ships the Imperials take from this skirmish that they have. I didn't think they took any. No? Okay. It, very few if they did take any of them. Okay. Because they already had most of them. Yeah. Yeah, because it was originally 200? Mm-hmm. And this was like 15? 15. 15. Yeah. 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 Well, the battle eventually ends. The Empire leaves. And uh, Luke... And Han, they discover that these Imperials, these stormtroopers, they're all clones. Clones. Oh. Clones. And that's why they're all messed up, because in this version of Star Wars, clones are, like, really unstable if you grow them quickly. Right. Because there's a lot more to do with the Force with cloning, apparently. Like if you if you raise a clone too quickly, the force has a hard time like connecting to this person because something there's like, like two that. of them and uh, two of the same it's, person it's or something. Goofy, yeah. But uh, you discover in I think the last command what their workaround was, how they got all the. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there when we talk about last command next week. <sighs> next week. Next week. Yeah. And so they're all like, 
Oh, Ugh, they have clones wow, that was on close. all close. Yeah. All right, they have clones. No wonder they needed all these ships. Yep. Good thing we stopped them. There's only 15 ships here. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. And that's essentially the end of... Pretty much. Oh, Luke finds Mara Jade and they go back to Coruscant. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because she's floating around. Yeah. <laughs> he used the Force to find her. Yep. I used the Force. There she is. Right there. Ugh. Oh. That was quick. Whew. Mm-hmm. Job well done. Good job, me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's Dark Force Rising. It is. It's kind of a strange story. Yeah. Hmm. And once again, Thrawn loses. He no, kind of wins. Wants. Yeah. He has 185 ships oh. and a bunch of clones to fill them with. It it's the Empire Strikes Back of the Thrawn trilogy, Curtis. He he wins. Oh, maybe I didn't get the impression that he got any ships when I read the yeah no novel. They were like all the ships are gone. Thrawn must have them. Because Thrawn figured it out before them. Thrawn got the the other captain dude. Oh, okay. and uh, in the book, there's a a scene with Thrawn. I forget if he's talking to Captain Paleon or who he's talking to, but he's like. Talon Card will negotiate a deal with the New Republic to give the ship locations up. But that will take time, and in that time, we'll be able to get the ships. Uh, I see. Throughout this story, doesn't Niles Ferrier also start working for Thrawn? Right, yeah, that happens. So I think that uh, has something to do with it, too. Oh, that's how I, he discovered the captain, right? Because yes. they were on that casino. They were on the casino yes. ship, and Lando's like... <laughs> Niles Ferry. Niles Ferry. I know that cigar stench anywhere. <laughs> That's right, because Lando and Han they they fight the the wraith or whatever, mm-hmm. and the wraith isn't very good at fighting, and they right. like spill well, a bunch of he's, alcohol he's on him and light him on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he lives. Yeah, he does. Awesome. Yeah. He's back for the for the last command. Uh, but. Is is it in Dark Force Rising where Talon Card puts the 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 smuggling group together? Or is that's that last command? Last command. Okay. All right. Yep. That's coming. That's coming. I forgot where that happened in the story. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that's so that's how it worked. That's how Snell's Farrier found the dude. The dude gave him the ships. Nice. Okay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, what'd you think, Curtis? Yeah, what'd you think? From your graphic novels. It was fine. I think you would really enjoy reading them. So. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I guess for the the next one, I'll probably listen to the audio while I'm reading the the mm-hmm. graphic novel. It's probably a really good idea. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Mm. And what else? Um, um. I mm. thought Leia's like. Just her side story all by herself was kind of strange. Well, I guess she was with Chewie and C-3PO, yeah. but I don't know. It's it's very important, much to my own chagrin, and we'll get there in The Last Command, why oh, it's is important. It? Uh, yeah. it okay. Is. okay, so it's a big setup, I see. Mm-hmm. Or it it's, is, a it's a big setup, and I don't think the the payoff is both really big and not big enough, if that that mm. doesn't make sense, but it, mm-hmm. it will once you get there. Yeah, I gotcha. Think. All right. And I'm glad that Ryan agrees with me on that. Cause I do. Because we, we've had a few discussions yes. about this since... Since uh, I finished since reading finished it. Since finished it. And <laughs> yeah, I, I do kind of agree with that. So, But uh, you viewers at home, if you have also read Dark Force Rising, perhaps leave a comment, uh, your thoughts about the story, or... Uh, maybe a complaint or something you really liked. If you liked this video, leave a like. Yes. Perhaps a subscribe. I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> and then tweet it. Yes. I'm doing that. Oh. Well, retweet his tweets. Oh, Lord. He, need, he needs Twitter followers. Yes. Oh. Give him all the Twitter followers. Twitter followers. This is a call to all the Twitter bots <laughs> out there. Give Noah all the followers. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need bots following me. <laughs> it's worse than real people. Is it? Hmm. That's a tough one. 
like, and subscribe.